so I have a new camera, or not a new camera, I have a new camera too. Got it from James Hobson, the hacksmith. But I got a new tripod for it, so um, this is the first time I've really got to shoot on it. I did a little bit of shooting for James this morning, but it was very static. This is the first dynamic video I'm doing. I look great, look. The camera is right there, right at eye level. I love that. My other one was too short. You guys don't want to hear about that. You want to know why you're here today. And that's because I am making an indicator holder. Um, I've got some aluminum chopped up. And uh been thinking about this for a while. I had to do a redesign of it this morning. Um, I'm not going to talk about... I'll give you like a little brief. I'll give you a brief... I'll give you a brief idea of how it's going to go together. So there's going to be... Let's find the main pieces here. These are the main pieces, right? So I have this aluminum. I already have it chopped up. And the way it's going to work is... Uh, I'm going to have this piece here, and then this piece sitting here, and here, like this, right? And then, uh, oh, okay. Like that and that, and then I'm going to have this piece of all thread going through there. Come on, focus, man. There we go, manual focus for the win. All right, um, the focus on this is not that great. Okay, so I have... This, this piece of stuff, it's going to have some captive nuts in there. It's going to run on this piece of all thread. I'm going to fix this up on the lathe. There's going to be some holes in this for this to just spin in. Then I'm going to run up a little uh, knob out of this brass piece. And that's going to twist. And this is going to have a, about three quarters of an inch of travel. This holds my indicator. Um, and then there's going to be a series of holes so I can step this out and in because everything's really tight and I need this to spin inside, but then I also want to be able to sweep it out and go all the way out to like six inches. Um, yeah, autofocus back. There we go. That's nice. This, this is good. I'm getting better with this camera. Yeah, okay. So that should give you, that's the, that's the general rundown of how this is going to work. I have all the CAD done. Um, I think I'm going to stick it on a time lapse and just kind of, because I got to think and look at this. So I think I'm going to put it on a little time lapse as I do all the probing in and all that stuff. And, um, and yeah, we'll see, we'll see where this goes. I'll probably check in back with you guys after I get those parts machined. This may be a couple day project. I'm really busy with the stuff for James. It's been like four days, five days just getting to this point. Um, but yeah, we'll check back in in just a second. For you guys, it won't be any time at all. I started the, uh, I kind of, I kind of messed up that, um, time lapse. Couldn't remember the word. Um, I'm still kind of getting used to taking them. This camera, again, is kind of new to me. Um, so forgive me. Uh, I'll probably like kind of breeze through that in the editing a little bit, but uh, I ran into a bunch of issues with my Z height being all over the place. I don't know if there's an earthquake or something that just moved my entire thing around. So I kind of had to focus and get that done, but let me explain where I'm at. Uh, in the time lapse, you should have seen me do this first side, this A side, or actually, I'm sorry, I guess I would have done like the top. I would have done like this top piece right here. I would have done this top piece right here, and then uh, the bottom side, and I think that's when the time lapse stopped. Um, and now I have this side here, and then I'm ready to do the last operation, which is where I drill a hole to. Um, and I also cleaned up one of these sides, so I like, when I was doing the, this flat piece here, I also had it kind of sticking out of the vise and then came and did that side just to get it nice and clean. Um, and so now what I'm doing is I'm gearing up to do the, uh, the last part right here. So if you can get it to focus here. Okay, it kind of focused. Um, anyway, you can see here I have it chucked in and I'm about to do it with uh, two tools and I will put that, um, I will put that, why is it doing that? Sorry, my autofocus is being weird. Sorry guys. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna get you a close-up of that being cut. Uh, that way you kinda understand what's happening. And it's the last operation anyway, the most exciting. The reason I'm flipping it and cutting it is to try to get it square. Um, also, you can't just machine all the way around something, so you kinda gotta flip it around. I'm, not, I'm still not sure this is the best way to machine things, but things that need to be machined on all sides is probably the best way to do it. I'm still working on my, on my workflows and stuff, so. We'll see what happens. I'm gonna go grab a bite to eat, then I'm gonna come back and film this. We will get through the machining of the flat parts today, and that'll probably be the end of it for today. Um, and that'll do the lathing tomorrow, and maybe, and maybe get to the uh, 
the final assembly tomorrow. We'll see what happens. It might be not, it might be two days, but yeah, I'm gonna go eat and I'll be right back. you guys just saw it so i'm gonna talk about it um something was off with my probe my probing has just been weird today i'm really zoomed in um my probing has just been weird i missed this and i could tell this was moved over and i didn't expect it to hit this nut but look at the uh can you see it yeah there we go look at that fucking part it took out of that you saw the sparks um that's wild uh so yeah i'm gonna i'm i tried to do this before i went and eat i shouldn't have done that i probably would have been thinking better and maybe i wouldn't have made that mistake though i think it was the probe's fault but i should have caught it so i'm gonna come back and fix that here in a second we'll do round two This part is pretty much the only done part. Even this little 3D printed, which I realized I didn't really say, I already 3D, I 3D printed this off camera. So this, this little part is a like a slider piece. So this is the part that slides, this actually holds the indicator. I'll probably replace it with something better at some point. I'm gonna show you how I finished that later in the video. I already had that 3D printed. I already had the metal cut too, if I didn't say that already. I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, long day. Very hectic, lots of little tiny bugs and problems, and the machine was just giving me so many bugs today. Fusion 360 was putting out bugs, which it does every now and again. Uh, the Universal G-Code Center that I use is like some hat together shit. It doesn't work very good. Um, I was watching this cut though, and unfortunately I didn't catch it. I mean, it was on the, it was in the time lapse, but you wouldn't be able to see it. But this thing, man, the machine really does rip some aluminum sometimes. The thing spins at. Uh, uh, 40 hertz 400 times a second um, so it really can and, and it can really move itself around too so you can really take some pretty I think impressive amount of material material removal rate um, which is like the the horsepower of a um, of a CNC is calculated based on its material removal rate I feel like you can do some decent work with a little light machine like that it's a bummer that thing is out of square but you know it is what it is uh, but this this part right here is done so uh, the way it's gonna work is these parts are gonna lock in here and then that there's gonna be the thumb piece over here and that 3d printed part is gonna move in here and then uh, the problem is, is it, it doesn't fit in there, which I caught this morning. Fortunately, I was gonna build it like a lot longer, but I realized it was gonna run in. I wasn't gonna be able to sweep all the way around. But if I wanted to do it, I can lower it, lower it below and then I can swoop out further. I know, uh, but that's what all these are holes are for. So I can adjust where it attaches into the spindle and I can make it spin all the way out here or make it spin all the way in here and three places in between, right? And then this has enough travel to hit over all these places. This has, uh, 0 0.75 and these are 0.7 apart so um, <laughs> Hopefully I did my math right um, or put the numbers in right so that parts done uh, This part is done. Thank God. I'm done with the machine. It's kind of driving me a little crazy today. Uh, it was nice at the end though um, is There's something else I wanted to tell you guys. I feel like there's something else I wanted to tell you guys but I can't remember what that is now um, I am digging this new camera. It's a good setup. I know I'm looking at like a cr not I need to look at this the thing I'm looking at the screen 
it is what it is. This is why Casey Neistat wears glasses, so you can't see where he's looking. It's a true story. Um, yeah, I'm done for today. I need to go edit that. Uh, that. Oh, I know what else I was gonna say. Um, I have been working a lot on this exoskeleton for James. James Happs in the Hacksmith. I'm sure you guys. I mean, I'm sure you guys know that's what I'm doing right now. And I've been working like all day um, on his stuff like all the days on his stuff and working on my stuff in the evenings, kind of like get off at five or six, sometimes later. Uh, I'm working at like a normal job and then I'll come out here to do my stuff. And I'm pretty tired and exhausted, but this morning I did some filming and then I kind of snuck out here, you know, earlier in the morning. And I, it's one of the first days I've, um, I've got to uh, like come out here and work. And it's a little annoying getting the machine to run. Maybe I'm rusty too. Um, and my knee's been hurting me and being standing all day is actually making it feel better. And I'm just saying, it's nice to be back in the shop making stuff. I also love designing stuff though. Like I feel very happy and excited designing stuff. It makes me smile a lot more. And this is like more drudgery. I don't know, it's weird. That's uh, my little rant on the philosophy of building stuff um, up in the shop or down in the shop versus up in the uh, office. So yeah, I don't got anything else to say on that. Um, tomorrow I'm going to come out, I'm hoping tomorrow, and do some lathing um, on this little guy. And then I need to make the thumb drive. And then I need to thread tap stuff and counter sinks and do all the finishing. I got to run to the store because uh, there's a tool in here I need to put in my shop so bad. It's an expensive tool. Um, it's not like a tool, but it's a tool. Um, it's a huge bin full of every single type of screw that I like to use every type of machine screw. I like machine screws. I mean, I probably have some other stuff in there I like using for wood and stuff, but mostly machine screws um, of just every single length, every thread size, countersinks, uh, socket heads, hex heads, um, out of good quality parts. Um, and I might even want them in different types, like stainless steel and oxide and grade eight and great, you know, I might want all that shit. Or I might just go with like really high quality. That way I don't have to have quite as much variety. I know I'm on a rant right now, but uh, I want to do that at some point. I'm gonna, but it's an expensive tool and I have no money. So, yeah, yeah, all right. Thanks for watching, for now. Um, I mean, I'm gonna be right back, because it's a video. But I'm gonna go upstairs and work. See you guys just like that. Alright guys, next day as promised. It's a little lazy today, got the lights down in the garage. Um, did some lathing, and uh, you saw me working on this piece. This is the, um, this is the thread. Let's see if I can get the focus on my hand. There we go. Uh, this is the thread right here. Um, it's got these pieces on it that allow it to go through the through holes, right? Like this, like that. Oops. My uh, holes are not even, so I don't fit both ways, um, which is fine. Uh, so this goes like that, right? Um, works pretty good. 
And then this piece, this piece, <laughs> I like this piece a lot. Uh, this little tiny brass guy, yeah, that's a, that's a nice little tiny piece. I just love that I can make things like this, you know what I mean? And who doesn't like a nice little brass piece? It's kind of not showing up on camera that well. Maybe I can get it. Well, you can kind of see the step there. It's null, it's a, uh, has knurling on it. It goes right there. And then that's gonna be the part that allows me to twist it. Um, the 3D printed piece is gonna run in between here. Um, then I didn't film this guy because I thought it would be boring. It actually is kind of nice though. Um, let's see if I can zoom in and get it to focus, yeah. Um, it's uh, got, yeah, that's better. Let me show you. Let me show you this again now that I got that all zoomed in here. Yeah, there we go. Um, there's the knurling on that. You can see it's, this is just gonna be glued on because uh, I don't want to go crazy, and I don't have little tiny countersinks to the ability to do that. But um, this guy is actually pretty nice. I didn't film it, film it, so that was gonna be boring. Um, but it's flat there, little edge break there, thread inside there, big old chain for here because the thread doesn't go all the way through. So I want to be able to easily visualize which side is up. And then this piece um, goes on to these holes, right, and comes right through there, and a bolt goes through there and uh, holds that together, right. So it'll be like that. And this is the part that actually goes up into the spindle. Um, yeah, that's all I'm doing today. Uh, tomorrow, hopefully tomorrow, should be tomorrow, um, I'll come through and um, thread tap, countersink, do all that stuff. I gotta run to the hardware store and uh, get those bolts that I told you about yesterday. Uh, and then I guess I'll be finished. In theory, I'll finish tomorrow, we'll see. Knock on wood, that, that might not happen. But um, not tomorrow, the day after, hopefully. Ooh, that hole is not straight. Or that chamfer's not straight, one of the two. That's right. Um, wait, that, boy, that doesn't look, could be the thread, it's hard to say. I can't tell, yeah, it looks like it's thin up on here, doesn't it? I don't know, um, but yeah, it'll work <laughs> regardless. So um, yeah, looks pretty good. Yeah, I like this little brass piece, this little brass piece is great. All right, bye guys, until tomorrow. Doing some thread tapping, guys. Just doing a little test fit here, and I wanted to show you as I got halfway through it. I'm like, let me show you this. Did you understand any of that? <laughs> uh, I said I was doing a little test fit, and um, I just wanted to show you guys as I put it together. Oh yeah, that feels pretty good. Yeah, there's not too much play in that. Don't have the 3D printed part on there yet because I have to clean that up. I think it's the last thing I have to do. Oh, and I gotta grind the, I gotta do some corner breaks on these. Just to make it look nice, not necessary. But that'll eventually be coupled, right? And uh, spin just like that. Yeah. You know, I thought I was gonna have to go to the store to get countersink bolts and uh, the bolt to go through the, the main guy here. And I didn't, I had all the hardware. That's just lovely. All right, I'm just gonna kind of clean this guy up and walk you guys through how I do it real quick. Cut my finger open. God, I see. I knew. I'm like, that doesn't feel safe. It's not that bad. But I definitely got it with a razor blade. I haven't done that in a long time. I'm surprised I cut it on video. No, not on focus, because my focus never fucking works. God damn. All right, I'll be right back. I usually don't put any sport on cuts. Usually just suck it up. Maybe I'm becoming an adult. <laughs> Whatever, I grabbed it, so keep me from bleeding all over everything. Sometimes when I cut myself, I just let it bleed.
I just let it bleed as a reminder for me being dumb. Because whenever you hurt yourself, it's your own fault. So. All right, what do you say we work on the table? That way I have something to hold this against. I'm trying, trying to hold it up and show you guys. All right. Cut away from yourself. Best way to use an knife. <laughs> Take it from me. I speak from experience. All right. I wrapped my little uh, Dremel tool in tape the other night when I was high in my garage because uh, I do stuff like that when I partake. It's better. It feels better in my hand. Not gonna, not gonna glue that quite yet. Um, so we're gonna give this just a little bit of sanding here. Um, bump right there. The bump, this bump I'm gonna try to get rid of that cut my finger open. And I'm not worried about making this guy perfect because I'm probably gonna replace it with something better anyway. It's just a 3D printed part, but. All right, okay. So a note about gluing these things, right? So when you were doing a captive nut and you guys have been listening to me bitch about the focus on my camera all the time. So I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to get it into focus, but there's a hex that I 3D printed in here and that's what I was cleaning up. And then uh, this is gonna be captive in here. Um, that's how I'm adding the threads. So it'll go in there like that. Um, and um, it's gonna be super glued in. Uh, a note about doing this. So I'm just using this to get it out. Oh, I need to clear that hole up. One second. Still with me guys? All right. So now what we're gonna do is put a little bit of glue on here. Oh, what I was saying. So what you want to do is you want to glue in one first and then so super glue. Not that the glue matters all that much. I mean, they're not going to move around that much. That was a lot of glue. Hold on. Get some of that. Get some of that out. Okay. All right. Pop that guy in there. They're nice and good. Super glue really doesn't like to stick to these really polished surfaces like this anyway. Um, but uh, but yeah, so what I was saying, what I've been trying to say the entire time, is when you do this, you want to make sure you have the thread engaged uh, before you do it. So. Gonna do this, like that, put the thread on here. And then push. I'm gonna try to get it in here. Let's see. Okay, so now what? Oh, I forgot to put the super glue in. Um All right, I'm doing a terrible job of explaining this, so I'm just gonna explain it really quick. I got this one in here right. If I just glue this one in, uh, I don't know if the threads are gonna align. Ooh, you know what the heck's in there? That might be a problem anyway. Um, Cause it might be twisted now that I think about it. The, so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make sure that the threads line up on both sides, right? Um, so now, but now what I'm thinking is, you know, I set the, 
the angle of these, so it might not. I was trying to glue this one in first and then pull this one in and glue it in. And I don't know if I can even get this one in. So let me let me see if that's even a possibility. If not, we can just use one. It's not the end of the world. Um, let's see here. And, uh, let's see what we can... I guess it doesn't have to go in all the way. Yeah, that's true. It doesn't have to go in all the way. So yes, that that'll work. Uh, Very tricky. I'm gonna put this in the vise. This is really tricky. This is really tricky. I might have designed something. <laughs> might have not designed it well, guys. Here, let's see here. I don't know if I'm gonna glue this one in. I think I'm. Not, I think I can get in there, but I don't know if I'm gonna try to glue it in. I think that might be asking for trouble. So. I think this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull, I'm going to back this guy out like this. And then I'm going to press this guy into here. And then I'm going to put this guy in. That's what I'm going to do. There we go. Okay, I can put a little bit of glue in here, hopefully maybe get it around the corners and hold it a little bit. See, that is spinning. There we go, that's what I wanted. So now I can put a little bit of glue right there. Little dot, little dot, little dot. Dogs are barking, I'm sure you hear that, very annoying. That, that's what I'm looking for, look at that. Okay, so now it's got a thread on both sides. Uh, a little trickier than I thought. I didn't completely, I didn't completely, I didn't completely think it through. But um, yeah, oh, that's super crooked. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, see now the thread is coming through out the other side, it lines up perfect. That's what I wanted. So now, I just gotta make sure the indicator fits in this. We should be able to put it together. Oh, I need to do the grinding. I got a new file. I like it. It's small. It's kind of weird. I've got this like file system, but it works. Okay, indicator. I didn't even explain this, and I may change the intro to this a little bit, but this this uh, shows you how it's like moves. A, it shows each one of these divisions is a half thou, um, and so this is what it goes in it. That's how I'm figuring out the center of this thing. So I got to make sure this arbor right here fits in here. Like I said, this is temporary. I'd like to make something that holds this on the body so I can hold it a little higher up, but yeah. So 3D prints are never clean. So we're just gonna, I should say FDM 3D prints are never clean. I'm sure those uh, resin ones, which I want really bad. I'm gonna buy a resin printer for sure. I think it's how I'm gonna build the, uh, well, I want to I wanna build the coal gas thrusters with it. And if you watched my Dylan talk, you know, it's also how I want to build the um, Mark II. Uh, it's going to be 3D printed, which is super nice, make it any shape, and then uh, covered in um, carbon fiber is the plan. Uh, do a fiber wrap on it, and then all the actual, like, joint components will be machined, made out of metal, um, but all the structure in between will be... Um, Carbon fiber, which is nice because it's light. It's super strong. They're not quite as strong as titanium um, But it's really strong. It's a uh, also um, um, Very stiff so it's got really good performance in that way and then uh, When it breaks it doesn't bend and I don't know if this is the right way to think about it, but I have this fear of like being in a metal suit and getting hit by a really heavy load and having a, the metal wrap around me with me in the in there. Um, I'm not sure it's that much better for it to break off because then you just there's nothing in between you and it. But at least you won't get trapped in a twisted hunk of metal. Um, so it'll break. It'll shear. Kind of like glass. Think of it like you know really hard glass. It doesn't not quite that brittle, but it, it doesn't deform plastically. It deforms 
non-plastically, inelastically when it deforms. It, it shatters. Um, it's not going to bend. Come on. Oh, it's a tight fit. It needs to be a tight fit, but it's too tight. Too tight. Let's just say that when I was a kid. Too tight. Didn't like my clothing and shoes on tight. Yeah, that's better. Um, and now I walk around barefoot and naked. Sometimes. Not always naked. On occasion. Um, so yeah, guess I'm consistent. No! No! How unfortunate. Speaking of not being very ductile, <laughs> this is how the carbon fiber would break. This is, uh, this is quenched. And then they don't anneal it at all, so it's really hard, but very ductile. Not very ductile. Back to my old trusty one. Yeah, I guess that fits in there just fine. I don't know why I didn't think I could use this anyway. Much larger. More teeth. There we go. Fit. Yeah, that's nice. A little bit of this, just a tad. There we go. Yep, that fits. All right. Um, ground. Let's put this thing together, shall we? It is so messy out here and I really need to clean. I just haven't. All right, let's, uh, I need some oil. I need some oil. Okay, I'm going to put in, does it matter which way this goes? Let's see here. I know I'm kind of working down here. Maybe I should, uh, do a little bit more. A little bit more like that, perhaps. Okay. Um, put this guy in first. Oops, wrong way. Okay, that's on nice and tight, and then this one's gonna go this way. So let's uh, make sure this is right, because I don't want to take it out. Okay, all right. We are just gonna put a little bit of oil down here, because I'm trying not to get it on the top part here, because we gotta put some super glue there. Um, but we're gonna put this through, make sure I'm going the right way, I am. Like that, okay, and then, we're gonna need here, need a place to set that. There, perfect. Okay, um, you see what I'm doing? Let me bring that down just a little bit. Go. Where's my accelerant? There it is, okay. Okay, all right. We're just gonna put, let's just do, 
let's do it this way. Let's put just a little skosh glue right there. Just a little bit, a tad too much to get off my finger here. And we're gonna just put this here. I'm gonna lean it back so that I don't get it on. And I kind of want this pretty tight. I'm gonna do that. Do that. And literally just like that. That's all I'm gonna do to put this together. I could always remachine one of these and put one of the set screw. But if I ever need to get this apart, um, just heat it up, it'll pop apart. So that's assembled. So now let's put some grease some grease on the bottom here, because I want some in there for that to slide on. There, but not too much. There we go. And then I want to put some on this. Yeah, there we go. That was a bit much, but okay. Now we're gonna thread this guy on, hopefully without too many issues. Yeah, nice. Okay. Just get it to come through the other side. That's the part where it might not line up. It should. Nothing should have changed, but you never know. Why aren't you going in? Oh, it's spinning. My super glue didn't work. Like something's not working right. All right. Hmm. I'm gonna do this then. I'm gonna go here. Do, 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 do. This is annoying. Let's go here. Shit. Grab this gently. Get this on here. All right, that's together. So now let's try the super glue again. Really annoying. Here, let me try putting some right here. Pushing it down. Hitting it that way. Will that work? Let's find out. Seems to be working. Yep, that seems to be working. Did I do it wrong? No. Oh, no, I did it right. Okay. All right, so then. Back to the grease, add a little more right here, because I want it to spin that way. So I'm just trying to get it to spin in the bearing there. So now I got grease kind of all over all the bearing surfaces. Let's uh, get this guy to pop in. Oh, you're being tight on me, huh? Oh no. Oh, I put it on the wrong side. I forgot. I forgot that that's tight on one side. Oops. How annoying. How annoying. What do I do? Do I heat it up or do I try to open this guy up a little bit? I'm gonna open this guy up a little bit. That's what I'm gonna do. So when I did it, I the holes were slightly different and it only fit one way. And I forgot about that as putting it together that, so that the screw and the inside only fit together one way. And I forgot about that. It was goofy of me. Um, and now it's not fit together. So I'm just gonna widen the hole in this so that hopefully, hopefully it'll work. Okay, my camera died, so I didn't catch that on film, but I just heated this up with a torch and it popped off, and now it fits together. I know this is dumb. I should probably change it, but I'm not going to. Uh, <laughs> we're just gonna go. So that'll go there. Let me just make sure. All right, here's an orange right now, right? Uh, oh, I put oil on the wrong side. Okay, so let's put a little bit of glue here back on this guy. There we are. And then we're gonna back down inside like, oh come on, there we go, like that, and then we're going to put a little glue on top here, just make sure you don't go anywhere, okay, accelerant, makes it set instantly, very nice, very nice, okay, oh come on, oh, are you moving, let's tighten that, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, yeah, it seems to be moving, it's a bit tight. A little oil will help. I made it too tight. I mean, it's brass, so it should kind of 
form a uh, bearing surface here, but I have an idea. Since we're a little tight, I have an idea. Ooh, that was tight, okay. Now, yeah, there we go, that should loosen it up. Put some more oil on it. There we go. Okay. Yeah, it spins perfectly now. Okay. Um, so now, Send this guy through. Hopefully, just use a thumb screw for that. Okay, so I'm sending that guy through. 3D printed part. So lined up right it is. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Oh, it's really smooth too. It's good. All right, and then now. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> now that's how it's supposed to look. Let's put the screws in. All right. Okay, there we go. It's a little tight. is annoying but um, I may uh, I may take this the the 3d printed part off and sand it down a little bit it's a little stiff but I think for now we're gonna be good um, let's uh, let's get the rest of it together and put the indicator in see how we're looking I hope this bolt fits it does okay so here is the part that swivels and remember this this moves around to all this guy moves around to all these holes right here and goes anywhere and there we go let's put the indicator in <laughs> just like that right like that <laughs> that is pretty cool that is pretty cool I heard a, rat a rattle for a second. I don't. Oh, maybe? Yeah, I think the bolt is slightly bent, and so it's tightening and loosening, tightening, loosening um, on each spin, which is a little annoying, but you know, is what it is. The 3D printed part is not straight. That looks great, guys. I, um, I'm real happy with this. Uh, I'm gonna try to get it to focus. <laughs> How many times have you heard me say that today? Screw it, I'm going to the manual focus. There, now it's in focus, okay. Um, gosh, it's so annoying. Uh, but yeah, that, that right there is really nice. So it'll hold, it'll, this will chuck into the vise. And we're gonna, we're gonna do this on there. But this will chuck in, or this will chuck into the collet of the um, spindle. And then this goes like this, and I spin this around. Obviously I don't turn it on with this because this is really unbalanced. That thing spins 400 times a second. That would rip this apart in the machine. Um, not good stuff. So I go like this, and then um, I can, so I put it in there, and then this, this guy is adjustable. It has a little bit of adjustment down here. I just have it sticking down, and then I can move it around, and then I spin this around, and then when I'm reading zero on this, um, I know that uh, all the way around, there's no, I know I'm in the exact center um, of the part that I have in there. Uh, so this goes with the V-block, which is the thing I made to hold round stuff, and then this now does this. And then it's short, has a short stroke, so it can fit in there. I'll show you all this, and we'll get it in there, and we'll, we'll put something around in there. Um, and we'll get it in there, but yeah, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah, it takes a little while to get it all the way across, but you know, that's okay. I could use a little bit better, a bigger thumb piece, but this is the biggest size brass I had, and I wanted to use brass. I guess I could have used aluminum, but yeah. 
It's done! Finally! It took me like a week because I've been busy with other stuff. But it's done. Very nice. All right, we'll finish this shot up with uh, me putting on the machine and uh, turning it on and seeing what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for watching this long, guys. Um, I know it was a little chaotic with me. Uh, um, just being able to work on it like every few hours, but we got to get to know each other over the course of this build. Yeah. Yeah. Bye, guys. Man, I nailed it, like on the first try. At least on the uh, X. Let's take a look at the Y. All right, guys, so as you can see by that little video, um, this guy is completely, it's reading no movement. I think I said zero earlier. Um, oh, by the way, I think I figured out my, I think I figured out my focus. It's because I was in autofocus constant versus autofocus fixed constant. Yeah, con I wasn't in constant, I wasn't fixed. So once you set your focus, it just stays at that point, which is kind of dumb. I think that's what's going on, so if you're curious at all about that, I digress. Um, I think I got this, uh, I think I got this, okay. So what happens with this is, like, you don't want to, it doesn't have to be on zero. What you just want is you don't want the indicator moving at all. So if it's not moving at all, obviously you're in the center, right? So I did that, you saw that, that it works. Obviously I couldn't get all the way around the back. I used my camera phone, uh, like real machines have like mirrors. That's like old school, because I just got my phone out. And I just use my phone to look and make sure I can see that there. And we're like reading it like, you know, within a half thou, thou, all the way around. Um, so it looks real good. Uh, and, um, and yeah, so I, I hit zero on the machine. The machine is zeroed. I got some code and we're going to run these little parts. These are my little, uh, these are little caps for the pelvis for my Iron Man suit. So um, we're going to drill some holes in it and uh, we're going to see what happens. Yeah, it's going to be cool. Okay, so you can see here, um, these aren't the biggest holes, and that's intentional. I could have drilled them all the way through. Um, I just wanted to, to peck them so that I, because this thing is like, my, okay, my spindle is really out of uh, alignment, so it, it's not good to go drilling through deep things. It just makes my entire machine shake. Uh, I'll probably, when I do the rest of them, make them a little bit deeper than this. But um, yeah, it looks pretty good. Uh, and that's enough for me to finish it on the drill press. One thing you can see here is that this side is higher than this side for whatever reason. These are bigger than this one. I was pushing here. I might need to push a little bit more evenly as I tighten this in. But uh, yeah, for a um, initial try, uh, I'd say... Um, looking pretty good uh yeah yeah so if you haven't watched the first part of the series watch where i made go watch where i made this um this v block but but yeah guys that's all i got for you um i hope you liked watching that i hope you liked watching me i hope you liked watching me mess with my camera i just messed with it some more the focus on this thing really drives me crazy the autofocus should work i don't understand um but it's okay uh i'm, I'm i hope you liked uh i hope you liked watching me uh, work on this I know this video is a little bit informal, um, but you know, 
we, like I said, we got to know each other. So um, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, like this video. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't for whatever reason, which you might not have. You may have just come across for this thing, but I'm going to use this thing to build an Iron Man suit, and everyone wants to see that. No one doesn't want to, so subscribe. <laughs> thanks, guys. You're the best. I love you. Bye.